Okay, so last topic in this unit, and we're going to draw and interpret scientific graphs. So what I want you to do is to write the heading, lesson objective and keywords. So I want you to hit pause to give yourself some time. Copy these down when you're ready, write starter underline and then hit play again and you're ready to move on. So hit pause now. Okay, so time to move on. We've got our starter here. So what I want you to do is hit pause, read your starter and answer the questions A, B, C, D and E. Make sure you use full sentences to answer the questions. You, can use, you need to use the graph to help you answer these questions here. Okay, so hit pause now and when you're ready we'll go through them together. Okay, now you've answered all the questions in full sentences. If not, hit pause. If you have, then let's go through it. So, A. We got J. He's heated a beaker of water and left it to cool. So he's heated it up to a temperature and then left it to cool. And he's recorded the temperature every two minutes. And this is the graph of his results. So he started here. The temperature started here at 20 degrees. And this is the time that it took when he was heating and cooling the water. So it's heated it up, it's got hotter and hotter, and then it's cooled down, going down that way. Okay, and every two minutes he's made a record of what the temperature was. So let's look at A. How long did he heat the water for? So he started at 20 and the temperature rose to a maximum value here, which when we look down here is at 4. So from 0 to 4, so he heated the water for 4 minutes. Full sentences. Good. And then B. What's B asking us? What temperature did he heat it to? So it started at 20 and it rose to a maximum value here. And if we scroll across, it's between, it's halfway between 60 and 80, should be 70. So he's heated the water to 70 degrees. And we'll put 70 degrees C, because those are our units. C. At the start of the experiment, the water was at room temperature. What was the room temperature? Well, at the start, this is at time equals zero. At the start, the water was at temp 20 degrees. So, room temperature at the start. was 20 degrees. D. How long did it take the water to cool back down to room temperature? Well, it went from a maximum there, 70, and it's got to come back down to 20 over here. So it took 20 minutes to get back to 20, but the maximum temperature was at 4. So you need to do 20 take away 4 is equal to 16 degrees 16 minutes rather 16 minutes to cool I'm just going to rub out that degree there if you can get this there we are 16 minutes to cool good I'm back to a red pen and E which was faster the heating or the cooling well the heating took 4 minutes from 20 to 70 but the cooling from 4 to 20 took 16 minutes so heating was faster and indeed you can say by how much um, 16 minutes to cool and 4 minutes to heat so it was 12 minutes faster okay good what I want you to do now is, uh, if you have to, make some corrections. 
and I want you to rag one, two, three, your um, your 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 answers. So what do you think? Did you work well? Give you a G, and do you understand fully? If you understand, give yourself a one. You need more practice. Is a two, okay? And a three if you you're flummoxed and flabbergasted. So hit pause, rag it, make a comment, and when you're ready, hit play again. Right, so moving on, let's have a look at an example. Okay, so our example then, we're going to sketch a graph, we're going to draw a graph. we got Rory here, he's conducted an experiment with a spring, and he's hung different masses on the end of the spring. Then he's measured, measured how much he extended. So how much did he stretch the spring with the different masses? He didn't stretch it at first with zero. Then he put a 50 gram mass, then 100, 150, 200. And these are the lengths that is stretched by. So 28, then 62, 92, 110. So we're going to draw a graph to show his results. Now for this first one, we're going to do it together. So there's my graph. I've got extension on the vertical axis, the y-axis, and the mass g on the x-axis so what i want you to do is hit pause and draw this grid in your books so we're going from 0 to 250 along the x-axis and 0 to 120 along the y-axis make sure you um, put a title and label the axes so extension in millimeters on the y and mass so Sketch that now, hit pause, sketch it. When you're ready, hit play again, and we'll plot the points together. Okay, now you've sketched it, let's plot the points then. First one is zero, zero, which we're gonna plot there. Then the second one, mass is 50, and the extension extends the spring by 28, which is there. Next one is 162, so our mass is 100, goes up to 62 there, 150 and 92, and our final one is 200 to 110. Okay. Now, they're not quite in a straight line, but they're nearly in a straight line, so what we can do is we can put a, a line through them. We call this a line of best fit. Okay. So let's just write that on the top here. A line of best fit is called. So the line that best fits the data that we've got. And what we try and do, because it's not quite, they're not quite on the line, we try and plot some on the above the line and some points below the line. Okay? Let's try and get it through as best we can. So that's it. We've plotted our graph and our line of best fits now fitted in there. We've got one more question. It says, do you think there's a relationship between the amount of mass on the spring and the extension? So is there a relationship between the mass and the spring? Well, what do you think? Do you want to write something down quickly? Okay, do that. Okay, so let's have a look. Every time we increase the mass, when it's 0, 0, it's not extended. When we put 50, it's a 28. When we put more mass on, so we double the mass to 100, then we've nearly doubled the, um, well, we've more than doubled the, the, the extension of the spring. So we stretched it. And when we keep on adding more mass, the more mass we add on, the more we extend the spring. So there's a relationship there between the mass and the spring. Okay, so we can write that. So there's a relationship between the mass and the extension of the spring. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is some classwork for me. So I want you to start with question two. Okay, start at question two. All right. And what you've got to do is you're going to draw a graph of temperature 
against the oxygen dissolved. So you, you, you're going to draw a graph that looks exactly like this one here. So copy this graph into your book. Yep, those are the axes it wants you to draw. And then once you've done that, plot the points and then answer the questions. Once you've done two, move on to three, which is very similar to the example we've just done. Four, five. Okay. And you can stop at five for today. However, if you're feeling adventurous, you can have a go at the extension. Okay, the extension is, is very good. I think you can, you can do that. Once you've finished question five, actually, and the investigation, what I want you to do then is take photos of your work and upload them back into Teams for me so I can see them. Okay, good luck.